The Vatican on the defensive before a UN panel. The Holy See stands accused of failing to protect thousands of children from paedophile priests. Just how damaging is this scandal to its image? And will Pope Francis's efforts to reshape the church's hierarchy make any difference? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to Inside Story. I'm Laura Kyle. The Pope has called it the shame of the church. Decades of sexual abuse by ch of children by Roman Catholic priests around the world. For years, there's been a culture of secrecy surrounding the issue to protect the reputation of the Holy See. But now, for the first time, the Vatican is being held to account publicly. Representatives of Pope Francis have been questioned at a UN hearing in Geneva. They've been accused of not doing more to prevent this abuse, of a lack of transparency and of not taking responsibility for the scandal. We'll speak to our guests in just a moment, but first let's hear from some of the victims of abuse who attended that UN hearing. It was, it was overwhelming, but it was also gratifying. I think one of the things that made me come here was that my abuse was many years ago, but I since married and had children of my own. And what was really re-traumatizing is to know that it's still going on. All these years later, it is still going on. Not one thing has changed in the way of protecting children. I'm pleased that the uh, Committee on the Convention for the Rights of the Child undertook this undertaking, a massive undertaking of you know, asking these extremely serious questions of the Holy See, I'm very skeptical about the statements of the Holy See and their delegation that they're doing more and that there's been some sort of major change between 2011 and the present time because I don't see that being the case. It's ironic that the church, that the church officials are saying that individual states are responsible for, for prosecuting the priest and bringing them to justice when the Catholic church officials obstruct justice, they intimidate witnesses, they um, hide evidence and destroy evidence. Well, Archbishop Silvano Tomasi is the permanent observer of the Holy See at the UN. Here's what he had to say at that hearing in Geneva. In the end, there is no excuse for any form of violence or exploitation of children. Such crimes can never be justified, whether committed in the home, in schools, in community and sports programs, in religious organizations and structures. This is the long-standing policy of the Holy See. So plenty of issues being raised there, and here to discuss them today are guests. In Geneva, Keith Porteous-Wood, he's executive director of the National Secular Society in the UK. In Rome, we have Gerard O'Connell. He's a journalist who's covered the Vatican for 25 years. And also in Rome, Philip Willan, author of the book Vatican at War. Thank you all very much for being here with us. Uh, Keith, my first question to you, because you were at that UN committee hearing on Thursday. Talk us through what happened. The committee must be commended on taking on the Vatican head on uh, for the many breaches of the convention and their failure to cooperate. Uh, but uh, when they were uh, cross-examined, the, the very senior representatives uh, of the Holy See, which clearly came uh, after having consulted uh, with the Pope, were really playing hardball and refusing on, on these key issues. I mean, particularly, they were asked umpteen times uh, to give instructions to uh, the church worldwide that all credible ab uh, accusations of child abuse should be reported to the local justice authorities. They just refused to do that. They kept lots and lots of excuses, but they never agreed to do that. Uh, another key point was to uh, release, the, as the committee had already asked them to do, uh, the database of uh, uh, 
ac uh, accusations received at the Vatican, which it, uh, the worldwide church is required to do. Uh, unbelievably, uh, Monsignor Cicluna uh, said, I beg your pardon, it was, it was Tomasi, Ma Monsignor Tomasi mm. said, that would be a huge task. Well, if it's a huge task, that tells us that there's a massive amount of abuse. Uh, and we that's will uh, kind of the wrong answer. But plenty but of, plenty of points you raised there, which we'll, we'll look Sorry, at. Sorry, no, just saying it's a lot of it. Uh, absolutely, and we'll be looking at each particular point in a little bit more detail later in the show. The kind of mood at this meet, it, was it confrontational or was it quite congenial? Because this is the first time that we've seen the Holy See under such public pressure. Yes, I, I think there was a. It, it started off being relatively congenial. I think the the, the, the committee was uh, wanted to make sure that they were courteous, um, and that the uh, there was also uh, a problem uh, with. Uh, I, I think the attitude of the Holy See as the day went on, they become very, very, almost detached mm. uh, from from the the, the proceedings um, and and. Uh, the, the chair had to keep asking uh, Monsignor Tomasi the same question time and time again. It's not like he couldn't even d list the questions that he'd been asked. Uh, and on one occasion, he turned around and said, oh, uh, oh, uh, the, uh, the, an old question being asked again. Well, he was asked again because he didn't answer it. He didn't even try to answer it. Uh, Philip, uh, Philip so, Willan, if uh, I could I just bring you in at this point. I think frustration from the committee. Uh, absolutely. And a degree uh, of arrogance. Perhaps uh, also, from, if I could just bring the, Philip Willan in at this C point. In, because in um, basically not trying perhaps to answer this is because the Holy See is unused to being under the spotlight and being questioned at such length. Give us an idea of the significance of it being under such public scrutiny. Well, uh, clearly um, uh, the Vatican's attitude uh, to this scandal, which uh, has been ongoing really for, for decades now, has always been to try and uh, minimize the damage and uh, protect its reputation. Um, but the very uh, fact of minimizing it, in, in attempting to minimize the damage in the way that it has done, uh, has actually uh, hugely increased it because uh, it hasn't convinced the world that uh, it has been taking this uh, problem seriously. Uh, and uh, it hasn't really convinced the world that uh, there's been a radical change, that it recognizes that there were uh, terrible faults, uh, terrible crimes committed in the, in the past, uh, that it acknowledges that, uh, and that there's been a radical change. I think uh, that message uh, is uh, just not coming uh, over uh, mm. to uh, the world's media and to uh, public opinion. Uh, Gerald O'Donnell, do, do you agree with that? How do you rate the response of the Holy See at this committee? Well, I, I wasn't at the committee, but I followed from a distance. Mm. Uh, what is very clear to me is the there has definitely, I, I've covered this for 25 years, so I've seen the shift. I've seen, I've watched when the story really broke in the United States at the beginning of the 1990s. And I've seen the Holy See's position change enormously. Because then, uh, as uh, the first speaker said, uh, the tendency, and as the committee members said, there was the tendency to cover up. To th They covered up. And the uh, pr uh, protecting the institution above the child. This is what happened, although it wasn't perceived in simply that terms, but this is the actual fact. Then, at the beginning of the 1990s, and the, begin, the, the whole dimensions of the problem, which surprised even people in Rome, because people didn't know the dimensions of this problem, that it was transnational. When they got into the, the year 2001, Pope John Paul II issued an instruction that every case that happened in any part of the world had to be reported directly to Rome. Now, every bishop today is on under instruction to do this. Mm. Uh, furthermore, the, the last pope, uh, Benedict XVI, before he became pope, he, he had read thousands of dossiers. So when he became pope, he knew exactly what was happening. And then he gave instructions that there should be cooperation between 
the local church, when, they, when a bishop in a diocese now discovers that one of his priests has abused uh, children, he is obliged by the church to denounce it to the state. I remember I traveled with Pope Benedict to England. I was on the plane with him. And I remember in London, the head of the Catholic uh, group which was dealing with these cases said to him, Holy Father, we now report every single denunciation that we received to the police. And the Pope said, you do well. So I don't agree with the first speaker who said that I have Nothing to at this, at this point, though, bring in Gerard, because there is this point, there's this public case study that comes up time again when the church says that it is uh, denouncing its priests to the local and state authorities. I'm thinking of uh, the highest ranking Vatican official ever to be investigated on this sort of issue of abuse. It's the Polish archbishop and the Vatican has said that they won't hand him over, that he's going to be dealt with by their own criminal court. Well, technically, he's a Vatican citizen. So the normal procedure in international law is the state in which you're, of which you're a citizen uh, uh, carries out the justice. If the state doesn't do it, then it goes to an international body. The Vatican has opened two investigations on him. One is from the point of view of church law, since he has broken church law. And the second, I understand that they, and they said yesterday, that they are taking a criminal action against him. And the Vatican has criminal criminal court as well. Okay, uh, let's just throw that to Keith Porteous Wood. Do you do you yeah, agree that please. the church is doing what it should be to reprimand such priests? Well, uh, the, 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 there was example after example yesterday uh, of of where that isn't happening, and I'm not saying it's not happening anywhere, but uh, broadly. That isn't happening at all, and they were very went to huge pains yesterday not to endorse uh, uh, any the, the, the pressing uh, suggestions that they should make this mandatory um, and on the record. And as far as this uh, th this this uh, now former Polish uh, guy who was the uh, former nuncio in the Dominican Republic is concerned, mm. he cynically renounced his his Polish citizenship uh, to make it more difficult uh, and I'm sure with the, with, with the complicit with the Holy See to make it more difficult uh, for him to be extradited and to, to uh, be the subject of a secular p court in Poland and for the Holy See to say we don't have an extradition uh, with either the Dominican Republic or, or, or Poland and therefore we're not going to let him go. He's a fugitive in the Vatican, as indeed cardinal law became uh, before, and that's uh, and uh, that the idea that either of those have happened without the Pope of the time knowing takes an awful lot of believing. Okay, well, let's try and uh, throw this discussion forward a little bit because Pope Francis only recently took the helm. He, he's looks look at what he's doing to try to reform the church because since being elected in February, he's tried to bring more austerity and transparency to the Vatican. Just earlier this week, he chose 16 new cardinals, most of whom are from the developing world. Bishops were chosen in places such as Haiti and Burkina Faso, amongst the world, world's poorest countries. In a shake-up also of the Vatican's bank, Pope Francis removed four cardinals from its oversight board. There have been a series of scandals involving the bank and the pontiff has warned against what he's called priest wheeler dealers and priest tycoons. And of particular interest to this discussion, He's announced a new committee to deal with child abuse in the church. Experts will advise on a code of conduct for priests, better support for victims and screening of candidates for priesthood. Uh, Philip Willan, there is a lot of criticism being aimed at the church, that it's saying the right things, that it's not backing it up with any action. Is that entirely fair when we see this pope making all these kinds of changes? Well, I, yes, I don't think the uh, criticism is entirely uh, fair. Uh, I think uh, Pope Francis is very sincere in his uh, determination to effect really radical change. Uh, and I think he uh, certainly um, has been very upset by uh, all the, the uh, evidence of scandal that has emerged in recent times uh, and that really brought down his, uh, 
his uh, predecessor uh, and left the uh, church uh, really in a, in a, a rudderless uh, and desperate state uh, when he took over. Uh, so I think he's uh, sincere about reform uh, and I think he's uh, moving in a slow and deliberate way. Uh, he's uh, chosen people uh, whose opinion he, he trusts to advise him on these key matters uh, and he's gradually beginning to actually take action, uh, make the appointments and make the changes uh, but clearly not rushing into uh, uh, making uh, radical immediate changes uh, without sufficient uh, information. So I think it, it really is uh, far too early to judge him on uh, his uh, uh, new uh, line of uh, uh, governance uh, in the Vatican. Keith, Keith I can uh, see you but disagree But I think there? there is a problem with... Uh, no, no. Well, I, I, th I, th I think that the, the, it, it surely uh, him permitting, if not instructing, uh, those replying to very reasonable questions um, made under the convention by the Committee on, uh, for the Rights of the Child, uh, for example, to disclose uh, the information that had been sent to the Vatican and, and is required to be sent to the Vatican from the worldwide church uh, to disclose that information to the committee and to refuse to do that. That is, I'm afraid, not the sign of somebody who is uh, actively trying to make things better. He had a decision to make and he could have gone one way or the other uh, and uh, it, all we're getting is nice smiles um, and wonderful PR, what we're not actually getting are any signs uh, that he's r any different uh, from his predecessor as far as child abuse is concerned. Ger and Gerard, the Dominican Republic that's a uh, fair episode point. we that's just right. talked about that's is a fair another point example that the, of that. The non-disclosure of this information to the UN was a missed opportunity. Well, first of all, let me say, respond to the previous speaker that the fact that the, act, the Vatican actually, the Holy See actually came for the first time in history before such a commit, commission, the committee, is in fact the decision of the Pope. So he, he, to say he's done nothing and to say he's, he's done only doing like his predecessors is not true. Secondly, the question, the committee by its own remit does not go into individual cases. So to provide the committee with information on individual cases is not the remit of the committee. And I, th I think there has to be a clear uh, distinction here. When asked how many cases uh, have happened in the, in the past year, the Archbishop Tomasi said there were 612 reported cases to the Vatican. Now, to provide individual information on those cases is a major legal problem because a person has a right to have the information to defend himself or to take a charge against another person. But for all this to be put into the public domain before any actual judicial case has taken place, I, I don't think this is correct. This is not due process. So I, I think well, uh, could I we have to distinguish. That? Could I answer that, please? I think, I mean, e e even uh, the two officials didn't give that answer, and I'm sure that the, the committee would have been prepared to have had anonymized information. Um, but the fact that they pretended they didn't have an obligation to give it when it's quite clear under the convention that they do, uh, then I think uh, that uh, it is not a sign of good faith. And particularly this issue about not giving the instructions about... Uh, the, the, inf the information uh, uh, about the level of abuse that there has been. They were given a whole list of in things to ask, answer, and they just didn't do so. I they didn't if, claim if, that it wasn't appropriate. Actually, they said that the convention didn't actually, require them to do it. If you actually look at the statement of Archbishop Tomasi, you will s note that one of the points he refers to is a report of the John Jay uh, uh, criminal Institute from New York, which studied all the cases 
in the United States between the 1950 and the, uh, I think, 2010. So it's that they haven't given information yeah. is, is not true. The, the second thing is that the information on individual cases, it's a question, if you're asking a question of numbers, that's one thing. What kind of in exact information are you asking for? I, 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 list, I listened, I saw the questions, what? and to me, I saw the answers as well. And I also understand that the whole question of transparency, because this is what we're dealing with. Is it, is it transparency? Uh, I spoke to Monsignor Shikluna last night after the session. I spoke to him by phone, and I asked him this question. And he says, this is a work in progress. But okay, there Philip is Willen, no doubt I just want to bring you in at this point, because the issue is of not providing information on the cases is one point. Another point is that we're not really seeing how these victims of abuse are being helped by the church. What effort is going to follow up from that? What's your point there? Uh, yes, I think uh, the church really does need to do uh, much more than it's uh, uh, done up, up till now. Uh, and obviously we have to give the new pope a bit of time uh, to get to grips with the matter in, in practical terms. Uh, but it does seem to me that uh, the church is adopting a, a legalistic uh, um, response to, to uh, these accusations, uh, saying that uh, it's not responsible for the actions of uh, bishops and, and priests around the world. Mm. Uh, and that um, the uh, crimes committed in the various countries are the responsibility of the civil authorities there. So um, the people shouldn't come to the Vatican uh, asking about that. But at the same time, it uh, hasn't uh, given instructions to every country in the world uh, to make it obligatory uh, for the bishops to inform the uh, civil authorities, uh, maybe in some cases because there isn't uh, sufficient confidence in the judicial systems in uh, countries that could be hostile to the uh, Catholic Church, for example. Um, but I don't think that the church can say, um, we're not responsible for this problem. Uh, it's the responsibility of the various bishops' conference, uh, bishops conferences around the world, uh, when in fact the clear instruction is that uh, uh, these matters have to be reported to Rome. So I think they're trying to uh, uh, have their cake and, and eat it uh, to a certain extent on, on this. Keith, I can uh, see I you agree with that. Thing, uh, well, Gerald, what, Gerald what, your uh, point? What, what, what Philip says is correct. There has tended to no, be I, 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 a, a, a legalistic approach to the questions. And this is precisely the reason why Pope Francis has is decided last December to set up a commission for the protection of children where he will have experts with a lot of experience in the field on this commission. And one of the things that is aimed is to provide psychological and other types of help to the victims. Already in many countries, uh, there have been legal settlements in terms of money being given to the victims. I, the United States stands out in this because of its pr particular legal system. Okay, I'm just going to jump also in there because in we the are running um, out of time quite rapidly. Keith, this has clearly not been a perfect process, but what good can come out of this UN committee hearing? Well, I think that the, the, the publicity that's come with this, and I think the, 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 the international community will, will be pondering over some of the very unsatisfactory answers that were given yesterday, and I suspect this will come back in the UN uh, more, and that greater pressure will be put on, uh, on, the, on the Pope, uh, and I hope that the, new, that the new committee will learn from the from the bruising that they got yesterday, uh, that, uh, that the, the, the the world is not satisfied with the way it's being done now, and, and press for many more improvements in the future, particularly over disclosure and in, and dis instruction to, uh, to to report uh, priests to their local who who've, who've, uh, clerics who've. Uh, 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 credibly abused to their uh, local justice authorities. Okay. Those are the key issues, and, and I hope that there will be renewed pressure for that. Thanks very much to our guests for joining us today. Gerard O'Connell, Keith Portierswood, and Philip Willem.
and a reminder that you can find this show and many more at aljazeera.com. Just follow the links for the shows and then Inside Story. Many thanks for watching from me and the whole team here. Bye for now.